God has a wonderful way of working through our brokenness. He has the capacity to take our mess and to turn it into a beautiful message. All he needs is a heart willing to be broken, to be given and shared. Many are not willing to pay the price of a death to self. Some do, but for others it takes a significant or an even tragic life event to realize the joy of a life truly poured out for God and for others. Joy? <laughs> yes. Our God is extravagant. We can never outdo Him with generosity. We lay down our finite life and He in return gives us all of His, all of His love all of his peace, joy, and consolation. A person who is dead to his or her own will is fully alive in him. But what does dying to self look like? I witnessed a life broken and poured out for God and others just over a year ago. I saw a man die to his own will and find joy, joy he didn't even know was possible. This man's name was Chris, Father Chris to be precise. He was a Catholic priest. He was my closest friend and he died on the 29th of October 2016 from an aggressive form of cancer. I miss him very much, but I'm also happy for him that his suffering and pain served as a beautiful means for God to prepare him for a holy and a purposeful death. This is what suffering does. It has the power to purify and to lead us to embrace the things that are most important to us. Chris's sickness and suffering led him to the God he attempted, yet so imperfectly, to serve all of his life. Let me introduce you to Chris. Chris was, amongst other things, a very clever man. He knew it, and he made sure everyone else did too. During pre-grad gatherings, for example, he would often start an intellectual argument just to prove himself right and everyone else wrong. That often rubbed people the wrong way, but he took a lot of pride in his intellectual victories. Chris was also a very independent person. After spending years in the army, he made it obvious to everyone that he needed and wanted help from no one. In 2015, Chris contracted a, a melanoma, which quickly spread through his lymph glands and through his whole body. As his body weakened, he moved, he moved in with me so that I could care for him. It was very difficult at first and he slowly began to lose his strength and eventually his independence. Within a few weeks of him moving into the presbytery, he was losing his ability even, for example, to dress himself and his ability to shower and look after his most basic needs. He became short-tempered and frustrated with everyone around him as he dealt with the loss of his autonomy. He was never afraid of dying, but he certainly was scared of losing his dignity. Our parish staff, my parish priest, and I did all we could to uphold his dignity and keep his spirits high, but one day his attitude suddenly began to change. He began to talk to me about surrendering his heart and offering his suffering to God for those in need. I occasionally was the recipient of this special gift. Today, I offered my pain for you and for your work, Rob. As he did this, he began to find purpose and joy in his suffering, in his pain and imminent death. He began to let people offer him care and love and he would resp respond with gratitude. His mind was still very lucid until three days before his death. We argued and we discussed about many things, but 
His pain relief medications began to take their toll. At first he became, became a bit paranoid and then he began with the hallucinations. And after that I would sit by his bed listening to him talk for hours without him making any sense. He repeated himself and, and would be nonsensical. Each night, though, I would pray for him and I would anoint him before I retired to my own room for the night. Chris lay there with a blank gaze as I prayed for him that night. I held back the tears as I anointed his head and then the back of his hands with holy, holy oil. After I gave him a blessing and I was about to wish him good night, he began to pray. What he was praying made perfect sense. He said, Jesus, I thank you for the gift of my life. I thank you that you are there for me in my suffering. I ask this, Lord, give me the grace to accept the loss of my intellect. Those were his very last words. He died later that night. He died completely surrendered to the Father, united with Jesus' suffering on the cross. Through a life broken, given and shared, God was able to take his mess and turn it into a beautiful message. Thank mm -hmm. you.